I'm Nisa. Welcome to another episode of the Lost Crimes Library podcast. This is the story of the tragic murder of Alana Sims. Twenty-two-year-old Alana Sims was a devoted mother to a two-year-old son. At the time of her murder, she was five months pregnant and living in Tampa, Florida. Alana was someone people loved being around. She always had a smile on her face and had a positive attitude about life. Alana also had a quiet and down-to-earth personality. She was someone who kind of kept to herself much of the time. She avoided drama and enjoyed spending time with her family, especially her nieces and her son. She also had a close relationship with her sisters, and Alana was expected to soon celebrate her 23rd birthday, but sadly, she never got the chance to. On January 30th, 2023, Alana was found dead outside her Ford SUV in a new Tampa neighborhood around 10 p.m. When police arrived at the scene, they discovered that Alana's two-year-old son was asleep in his car seat in the backseat of the SUV. Thankfully, the boy was unharmed. Police took a preliminary look at Alana's body, and it showed that she had multiple injuries to her upper body. Initially, police were not sure what had happened to Alana, the extent of her injuries, or what caused the injuries that led to her death. But they were fairly certain that Alana's death was the result of a targeted attack, and it looked like she had been dead for quite some time. Police did not believe that Alana's murder was random, and investigators began pursuing leads right away. According to the police press release, homicide detectives started the investigation by speaking with neighbors, but conversations with neighbors quickly revealed that Alana Sims did not live in the neighborhood in which she was found. So detectives moved on to investigating Alana's close relationships, and one relationship in particular stuck out to detectives. Alana Sims was in a relationship with a Tampa rapper named Billy Adams III, and it turned out that Billy Adams III was acquitted of double murder charges three days prior to Alana Sims's murder. This was a significant lead in Alana's case because Adams had a criminal record, a record that pointed to a history of violent crime, to murder. According to court records, Billy Adams was acquitted, found not guilty, of killing two men in a recording studio in November 2020. In that case, Adams repeatedly claimed self-defense, which the jury evidently bought into, releasing him back into the public. So with this information, detectives were convinced that Billy Adams had something to do with Alana's murder. So they began looking into Billy Adams further, and what they found was alarming but compelling. For one, surveillance video and other evidence, including two live ammunition rounds, were found in his vehicle. The police claimed that Adams lured Alana to the New Tampa residential neighborhood on the pretense that she would be attending a party to celebrate his recent acquittal. Court documents revealed the potential motive behind Alana's murder as well. It was alleged in the documents that Adams shot and killed Alana because he wanted to be free from her and because he was not ready to have a child. So he allegedly killed Alana and their unborn baby so he could live whatever life he wanted without any responsibilities. Court documents also revealed that there could have been a love triangle between Adams, Alana, and another woman he was dating. A day before the murder, Adams exchanged text messages with the alleged other woman. In the messages, the other woman is upset about Alana's pregnancy, but Adams reassures her that he will take care of it. In the messages, he says that he wants to have a life and that Alana Sims will not be included in that life. The other woman responds with, quote, this ain't the way, baby, end quote. Detectives also purported that during the investigation, Billy Adams made misleading statements and changed his story several times. The court documents showed that once detectives laid out all the evidence against him, that is when Adams changed his story. He told detectives that Alana pulled a gun on him and that he wrestled it away from her and shot her. So Adams was claiming self-defense just as he did in the case where he was previously acquitted. All of this information that was revealed throughout the investigation led police to arresting Billy Adams III in connection with Alana Sims' murder. 
The judge immediately denied Adams' request for bond, and Adams' defense attorney asked the judge to put a gag order to prevent the press from receiving details about the case. His attorney argued that the gag order would violate Florida Statute 119 regarding freedom of the press. However, he argued it would also violate Marcy's Law, which gives victims' families the right to certain information about a case. Ultimately, the judge denied the request, but did so without prejudice, allowing for another judge to potentially grant a gag order at a later date. Meanwhile, Alana's family was celebrating her life and grieving their loss. With help from the public, the family successfully raised close to $18,000 to help with funeral expenses. They wanted to remember Alana for who she was, not the tragedy that happened to her. So they dressed up in pink, which was Alana's favorite color, and they remembered Alana as the joyful, positive, and bright life that she was. Alana's mother has spoken out about her daughter's case, saying, quote, We just want all this to come to a conclusion, so we can close that chapter and begin a new chapter, end quote. By March 2023, the defense's request for a gag order was granted. Adams's attorney reportedly argued that there had been prejudicial press coverage of his client's case. He cited a specific news conference the Tampa Police Department held on February 8, 2023, claiming the police released detailed statements Adams made during an interrogation that threatened his right to a fair trial. In order to protect his rights going forward, Adams requested that all evidence in his case not be disclosed to the public until a jury was sworn in. He also asked the court for a complete gag order, which would prevent any press coverage of the case for 30 days. In July 2023, there was another development. Reportedly, evidence shows that Adams has been communicating through jailhouse calls and that something he said in those jailhouse calls has relevance to this case and could potentially be incriminating. New documents also revealed possible evidence of gang activity, which can potentially influence sentencing should he be convicted. Adams faces one count of first-degree murder and one count of killing an unborn child by injury to the mother, which is a second-degree felony. And Hillsborough County prosecutors plan to seek the death penalty in this case. As of now, Adams is expected to be in court again at some point this month, and a trial date might be set then. I intend to follow this case and give you all updates when more information is available to the public. The murder of Alana Sims is one of the more upsetting cases I've covered. The idea that she was lured to her death and that she was allegedly murdered in front of her son is tragic. If it's true that Adams killed his girlfriend simply because he wanted to be free of her and didn't want to be a father, there was a way simpler solution to his problem. It's something people do every day. They break up with their partner and they choose not to be in their child's life. It's a way less violent and life-altering decision. The fact that we see so many stories that are similar to Alana Sims' story is disconcerting. Violence and murder should not be the answer to ending a relationship. After Alana's murder, her son was taken into the care of her family. He is with people who love him, and Alana's family says he is thriving. He's doing what all kids should be doing at that age, having fun and being a kid. Thanks for tuning in to another episode. Please do me a favor and like this video, share it, and hit the subscribe button for more. As always, leave your thoughts about this case down below in the comment section. You should know that this is the last episode of the year. I've decided to take a brief break during the holidays, so if you haven't yet caught up with all the episodes I've put out so far, whether on here or the audio versions which are on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, this is the perfect time to catch up. You can expect new episodes in the new year. In the meantime, you can still get true crime content from me during my break over on the Patreon. If you'd like to join, click the link in the description box below. Happy holidays and I'll see you next year.